Hey everybody, welcome to Red Ranch. It's, as you can see, it's a pretty foggy day in Florida, foggy morning. And I'm just stumbling around the log yard and I'm figuring out what I'd want to cut today. I figure what a better day to cut something than today and especially bring some color into this morning. Something with some really light and vibrant grains, happy. Happy colors, you know. <laughs> well, I'm looking around and I got some stuff. I got some cedar over there, but everybody cuts cedar. So I figure, let's see, hmm. Oh, there's some eucalyptus right here. Now, this is uh, rainbow eucalyptus, and this stuff is so cool. When uh, this tree came down, during a hurricane in florida and i've had it for about a month two months now and uh this this was on the side of the road uh a couple of days after the hurricane they were doing cleanup crew uh, uh, they were getting these big dump trucks around to pick up all the debris off the side of the road and i seen this and i seen an opportunity and i kept driving by it kept driving by it and i didn't know what it was finally i stopped one day and I saw that it was eucalyptus. And eucalyptus is not black. <laughs> it almost looks like ebony or something crazy. But this is just uh, end grain paint. And when it was first cut and stuff, there wasn't all these cracks. But this is, this is very common for eucalyptus. It's very um, uh, prone to cracking, checking on the ends. And uh, it's, it's, it's worth the extra dollars when you get a, a straight clean board with no cracks on the ends because it's uh doesn't have any 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 craziness going on here <laughs> this wood is very hard so hard uh it's full of a lot of stress that's why it, it tends to crack a lot more um than a lot of other species even when you put the sealer on the end to seal in the moisture it'll still crack is what i've noticed and uh this species here is, is, is rainbow eucalyptus, and there's so many species of eucalyptus out there, but this is rainbow. And when I first cut this stuff, uh, this bark was full of green colors and, and, and reds and whites and blues, and it was just it was just amazing, you know. It looked like something out of a fairy tale or something. <laughs> but these trees get up plus you know 100 feet tall. Uh, it comes from Australia originally. And as you can see now, it's been sitting. The bark has changed colors. It's more of just a solid, solid color now here. Bark's starting to flake off. There's a little bit of green left right up underneath there, as you can see. But let's make some dimensional lumber today. See, I have a, a log here. This log here doesn't have any branches or, or, or cool figuring that I could see that would happen. It's a very straight log. And it's probably going to make some really, really nice boards. Some nice boards, maybe some nice turning blanks for the lathe turners. Oh, my dad would like that. He likes to spin stuff in the lathe. So let's see. Let's see what we can do with this stuff. got this thing up on the mill this thing was uh almost almost what the tractor is fully capable of lifting <laughs> started to feel the back tires come off the ground but we have length it is nine feet nine foot long and on the short end it is 20 and 17 that chunk on the bottom is a little busted so i'm gonna go ahead and say 18 20 by 18 on this end and 23 
by 20. So now we can get it all clamped down and secured. Make sure it's not gonna roll off. Warm up the engine, spray off all the sand and dirt. So we got a lot of it around here. And soon we'll be cutting into it. All right, we got the first cut color reveal. Let's see what's inside of this guy. Some beautiful, beautiful pinks. Almost like a salmon pink, flamingo pink. And the grain is just really cool, really tightly woven grain, packed tightly. Super dense stuff. Really stable wood once it's dried properly. Makes great furniture. You got a little bit of a uh, cream color on the exterior. And along the along that sap wood, there's a dark, dark line dividing the two between. And then it just comes into this super, super rich colors of pinks and whatnot all right i think that's a pretty good first couple cuts i'm going to rotate this thing now cut the next face now when cutting dimensional lumber the hardest part about this is not only getting it up on the mill uh if you got a tractor strong enough to lift the log this big but the hardest part is um, rotating it after the first cut. See, I got my first cut and rotating it until uh, these, these stops right here are flush with the, the log itself. And uh, it's the hardest part when you got a, a manual mill and you don't have hydraulics and all the fancy stuff. But once, once you got that thing cut and rotated, to where it looks just like this up against the stops then you make your second cut again across the top and then when you flip it again it'll rest on this flat face and you'll have your 90 degree basically cut this side right here and this side right here will be a 90 degree when you rotate it it'll lay flat on that side and then you can make your third cut and then flip it again and you have almost a full cant or uh you know basically a big long rectangle and then you can make your your final cut and then from there you can decide what you want to do dimensional wise uh, when you're cutting it so we're going to make the second cut now Let's see what we got here. So 
Some more really nice grain. Clean, clean grain. There's no knots or tree branches sticking out. Really makes for nice boards, nice clean tabletops. Uh, cutting boards. These stuff is really, really good for cutting boards because it's so hard. Beautiful. Super, super neat stuff. Super, super cool. And I just have one more cut to go because I have... The top cut, the side cut, and the bottom cut down there. It's sitting flat. So I just have this one live edge piece to cut off. And then we'll have a, basically a great big beam. <laughs> a big cant is what they call it in the sawmill world. So we're going to get our cant out of this and then start cutting some boards. All right, now we got a great big beam. Big old cant of eucalyptus. And I'm just going to make them two inches thick. I'm going to just go down the log and make them two inches thick. I chose this side to, to make the go downs because the, this side here has cracks in it. And I wouldn't really want the cracks in the top of the boards. Now it might crack when it's drying a little bit on the ends. And it might be a little start of one right there. But, you know, it's just the luck of it. And thankfully this is... Uh, nine feet and it's always good to leave your log a little extra long that way when they do crack you can trim it down and then you can get an eight foot tabletop or something like that uh, you know if it's 10 if you want a 10 foot table or 10 foot boards then you make it 11 11 and a half feet and then you can they can trim off the ends you know when they get to working with it after it's dry and whatnot but we're just gonna keep going down the ends going down making my cuts that's okay if some of these pieces do have the live edge on them because i can come back afterwards and trim it all flush uh either whether it be one board at a time or if there's a couple of them make them all the same and get to going Now, we got some big, beautiful boards of eucalyptus. As you can see, right up inside of there, there's a little bit of quilting, uh, quarter sawn grain. And this stuff looks awesome when you finish it and everything. That quarter sawn looks amazing. And we got some pretty big, big size boards. I still have to make one more cut. This is uh, an eight inch, eight inches from the bottom of the bunk top of the beam I'm gonna make it down to six inches and then I'm gonna flip this up on its side and cut it down that way um, when I cut lumber or any dimensional lumber I make it uh, very usable for any of the amateur woodworkers with six inch joiners um, because simply you know most of us don't have 12 inch joiners and and we don't really want to be heave hoeing these great big slabs around big old pieces of wood and that'll give you the best uh 
best finish too when you when it comes to drying a lot of these boards won't be as cupped um, as far as that goes but we got some beautiful beautiful stuff these boards are two inches thick they are 14 and a half inches wide and nine feet long so once I get these cut or once I get these off the mill make my final cut get it down to six inches and I'm gonna take these boards put them to the side for for now and I'm gonna come back and, and cut them down to six inches they're gonna be sitting on the sawmill just like this and I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna cut them uh, six inches deep and we'll see where we go from there so now we have some beautiful beautiful boards gorgeous eucalyptus boards rainbow eucalyptus and I flipped the log or the cant up on its side and we're gonna go down and just start cutting some boards out of it some dimensional boards and I made my first mistake here as you can see that I cut into my stop and there's a first for everything so another perk of having a Norwood is when you're doing these dimensional boards you can take off the spike as you can see I've hit it a couple of times <laughs> but I haven't hit the, the stops until today so I guess I was doing pretty good I've had it over a year now so uh, perk of it is you can take that spike off Normally the spike grabs into the log and keeps it from rolling over when you have a rough lumber. And this right here, this cut out here, um, it's four dimensional lumber. If you were getting the lowest point of cut, um, this this cut out piece right here would, would bite right into the side of the log like that. So you can get really low cuts, um, but you can take that spike off and there's a flat face and you can just kind of screw that in there and, and, and that'll hold that in place without marring up your, your wood, your lumber. So that's a really cool feature that they have. And we're gonna cut these down. Right now we're at 14 and a half inches wide and we're gonna cut it down to six inches again. And whatever I have left for the six inches, that's gonna be my lathe um, stock for uh, blanks, for turning bowls and vases and anything really so we're gonna stop there we're gonna get you know a couple of boards out of it and then we're gonna unload everything off of the mill and we're gonna put those boards back on and we're gonna cut them in half to six inches so that'll give us quite a few quite a few boards to work with all right we're gonna get going We have true true dimensional lumber it's two inches thick by six inches wide and this is no inch and a half by five and a half like you get at home depot or something like that can't get this stuff at any of the uh, lumber stores hardware stores now we have true boards all right, I'll see you when I get the these off and I get the other boards on. And this is my final beam or cant, have you, what have you, for lathes, everything else for turning. You got beautiful grain. There's a little bit of live edge left, but it's much better to have a nice clean, clean piece to work with instead of uh, starting from the beginning and cutting off all the bark and everything else make some really really beautiful stuff out of that right there all right as you can see i got them all flushed up against the stops in the back here just like that and i'm just using this as my the beam as my uh, guide almost to tell me where six inches is and to kind of keep everything pushed up 
against the uh, stops altogether. Because if you just didn't have that beam or you didn't have something to keep them all flushed up against there, then some of them can walk a little bit out or a little bit out in the ends. So it really helps to have something as long as the boards are going to cut just like this pressed up against them. And there goes my trailer. <laughs> Lovely. So, um, so I'm going to make a, a couple of cuts here, two cuts, and then we'll have all of our boards cut. They'll all be two by six inches and we'll be able to stack them now. All right. So this is uh, this is what we got after all that. We got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We got twelve two by sixes of beautiful. Some of them are quarter sawn. Beautiful, beautiful uh, rainbow eucalyptus here. Some more boards there, and I got some smalls, some smaller blocks. I took off the top of one of them, smaller pieces like that for if you wanted to do something on the lathe for legs, make some nice coffee table legs with a on the lathe or something. And I got my my cant for lathe blanks. All right, well that's gonna be it for this one. That's all I'm gonna cut today. Not bad for a couple hours worth of work. Started at seven and I ended up. Uh, finishing up around 10 30 and if you like this video please uh, if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and comment i'd like to see what you guys think i should build with all this stuff this kind of wood here all right have a good one